right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I might not be able to contain my hype, so take everything with a grain of salt, because what I'm about to tell you guys might actually make not any sense, it might not be as accurate as it could be, but uh, hear me out on this thing, because Chase has become an absolute god, so let's check it out. Right, let's pick up my guy, the man's a hundred grand. We got ourselves Chase in the building and we get people to talk about what this actually is. So basically, S2 skill, while wow, remove limit, consumes 2.5% HP, current HP every second, gain immunity to CC, bloody bloody blah, blah. So this is what it was. A new one, instead of 2.5, it becomes 1.5. So if you hit a shield, you won't be killing yourself as fast. So that is pretty good. I like that. As for the critical damage, stays the same attack speed, however, has increased, and that is because of E of value. So that is pretty good. As for the S3, explodes the ground around self four times, dealing physical damage, inflicting stuff for five seconds instead of four. Each hit recovers HP equal to 3% of Chase Max HP. Uh, so that is four times 3%. Put down the extra recovery on that and uh, plus 25% of damage. So his healing rate looks like it became absolutely insane on DS3. We will be able to play that into the future as well. So honestly, ugh, that is sick. As for the S4 increases this all, but the changes made it so that you will get a little bit of base HP. Crit chance has lowered, but then again, the skill book makes it so that it is actually equal to what it was. But here's the thing the usual T5 dark that was on Chase currently is onto his S4 skill straight off the bat. So that is a general buff. That means that his T5 dark changed up completely, increasing critical damage attack speed by 400. When he dies, that is great, but the critical damage and attack speed increase, absolutely insane. So that is where I think it is already really good on his core kit without actually having anything. Now as to the S2, what usually gave him the highest attack damage, which is HP consumption per second has increased and attack speed critical boost has been doubled. Now this is great and all, this has been taken away and that made me think like, yo, is this a nerf or not? Well, we've had people just literally talk about this dude. He, this, this became the buff. But what it is after this, when HP drops by 1% for the duration of the skill, heal rate increased by 0.4% and reduces all taken damage by a lot. Okay, so the moment S2 is up, up to, what is it? 72% um, or maybe even 70% times 0.4, that will increase your heal rate by a nasty amount, which means you get an overall, let's say, uh, 20 maybe 30 percent extra heal rate increase that on itself broke right as for the s3 i don't feel like the mana cost increase and the heal rate increase by 100 percent it could be a lifesaver at some point i'm not quite sure if the damage is really going up by all that much it could be but i'm not quite sure about that yet but as for the dark skill uh, upon use dispels negative effects well i won't see myself using my s2 before my s3 however if you want to have a combat mechanic this might be something uh, that could keep you alive at the start and just go with it but will i use it i highly doubt it as for the uh, chase dark aka the t5 dark this is ridiculous. Increases non-hero damage by 1% every 1 second. This effect can be stacked up to 60 times. 60% non-hero damage. This is absolutely redonkulous. This is by far one of the biggest buffs ever. And not only that, instead of his UT2, you got his UT4 that increases non-hero damage by 10% and reduces the damage taken by 20%, which basically means... Uh, on top of the 60%, we get another uh, probably 25% on maximum on this. Now, this makes it so that you got to build two UTs for Chase. Does that really matter? No, because the damage increase is absolutely sick for PvE. I'm going to try this out in a little bit. I'll make another video about it. Don't worry. I will showcase the actual damage in a very standalone video. But now for the other two characters, because there was this huge 
controversy onto this where Syria got nerfed to some people but the S1 they actually took it out in the current update but this where that's where the thing is I'm not sure whether Syria has increased by a lot but if you look at this the mana cost went down onto the charge from three bars to two on basic that seems really good and if you just uh have the S2 light, the cooldown is reduced by 5% per each enemy hit. So guess what? You can hit 4, I guess. So yeah, it, it, it is strange to some degree. I'm not quite sure whether this is a thing. It is multiplicative, Dayun Kim says. So it's 1.6 times 1.25 is 2, aka 100% non-hero damage. Never mind. It is actually more than we thought it was. Oh, we that is sick. So some people said that the S1 is now 5 seconds and the uh, UT1 hasn't or has changed. I'm not quite sure whether Syria is on the right spot where she should be. But let's check this S3 skill. Uh, additional damage to non-hero enemies. Okay, if the target is not a hero, it deals additional damage that ignores defense. Now, ignore defense on the S3 skill even though it has a very hard, uh, high charge up time. Makes it so that maybe on World Boss 3... Uh, you will be able to do something and there was this s1 and everybody fell over that they actually made a full new patch note actually deleting this part took them like two hours of uh, extra maintenance to get that stuff out of there so yeah is she really that good with the s3 is she then becoming a nuking character that can be uh, abusing the Audi strat once again um, I guess it is okay but whether it is broken like chases i'm not quite sure i'm not a syria player please syria players put it down into the comments let me know what you guys think about this patch with your syria but as for the s4 on critical damage increased by 100 or by 10 percent and damage to non-hero enemies increased by one okay uh this seems like an overall buff this can be stacked up to 15 times okay so it takes you less stacks to do this but the critical damage is the same, but you do get some non-hero damage accordingly. So, is this good? Is this bad? It seems like a little bit of an increase, but yeah. Is it really all that? Cannot tell. As for the perks, cooldown reduction onto S2. Maybe good for PvP, but I don't see yourself dashing all that much. It might seem really interesting to use, but whether it is that good, I am not convinced Syria s3 still slow since it cannot be skilled with attack speed never mind like i cannot tell whether it is a good skill for let's say world boss 3 or not i really cannot tell anyway s3 dark up on every skill use increase the damage of the red moon blade by 15 percent this stacks up to 100 or I, w I was about to say 100 up to 10 times so 150 percent extra damage onto a skill as for the uh t5 dark increases damage received by heroes for 15 percent but as for roy um i'm not sure ladies and gentlemen like i have such a big wall of text where i cannot tell whether this is a buff or not so let's just go over the skills and try and make some sense of it. I will probably go over it again after it. So, attack hero three times. Targus takes damage by 25% for 10 seconds. So this is built in. This used to be on something else. Uh, I think it was on the perk itself. Yup. And it says target 25% and this changed up to the number of five times. So instead of three, it will be five. Afterward, each hit inflicts stack of mortal wound and deals physical damage over 16 seconds. So guess what? A lot of stacks. Uh, this is one of the few characters that might be doing good with continuous damage, but I'm not quite sure uh, whether it is broken or not. So yeah, will it really help you? I'm not quite sure, but the five stacks itself could be good. Increases damage by 25% uh okay so instead of critical damage increase which is probably multiplicative the overall damage increased by 25 percent i'm not sure whether this is a buff or a nerf but i have people way smarter than me better with me with numbers that can tell me otherwise so yeah is this good or bad on paper it looks i but that is a very good question. As for the S2, increase all allies attack and P dodge by 250. Afterward, Roy grants a scale for 10 seconds and increases own attack speed by 250. This is not new. 
Damage dealt to enemies by 20, that is new, and evades all physical damage attacks. That is still the same. Increases attack boost by 25% on the last skill book, so they transferred the attack speed to the attack boost. So, for what I can tell, damage to enemies, that includes heroes, and an attack boost increase on the S2 seems like a buff to me. As for the S3, moves behind an enemy, dealing physical damage, consumes the stack of the mortal wound, adding uh, physical damage for every stack. Now that you can get 5 stacks instead of 3, that seems like a very good way to do it. Upon a critical hit, recovers orbs, 2 orbs actually, and resets the cooldown of hack. So you can spam this, I guess, I'm not quite sure. It says cooldown of hack. What does hack actually do? Increases critical chance by 300. Okay, for base that's pretty decent. If normal attack is landed as a critical hit, attacks the enemy six times, dealing additional damage, inflicting a stack of mortal wounds with a 50% chance. So you could assume that if hack is proccing, you get about three bleeding stacks straight away. That seems pretty interesting. Levelier, which is a Roy main, confirmed that Roy is really good right now. We're about to see this in my speedrun that I will be running, but I don't know how much of an investment is needed. By the way, the English patch notes don't mention that Roy S3 cooldown went down from 20 seconds to 3 on base. So that on itself looks really, really good. As for the T perks, changes the number of hits to 5 times. So this way you will be able to bleed stack straight away up to 5. That is pretty great. So you can use S1 and S3. Uh, use all those bleeding stacks. Do a lot of instant damage. Looking quite neat. But is that the way to play? I don't know. As to the S2 open use, this spells negative effects from self. Awesome. So for PvP use, this could definitely be great. I like that. Blade Claw changes the target to an enemy with the lowest HP. PvP. Hold on is removed. Uh, that's not the case anymore. But people said three seconds. Is that on general? Because then it makes this as three like spammable as hell. Either way, uh, the T perks look very targeted toward PvP. As for the T5 Dark, upon a critical hit, there's 10% chance of bloody blah for five seconds upon a critical hit. Yo, this is lazy writing right here. It's three seconds, it's general. Okay, that is absolutely broke. As for the unique weapon, uh, normal attacks and hack have a 20% chance of inflicting mortal wound. 20% is interesting. Each stack uh, of mortal wound deals additional damage to 12% of attack. I'm assuming if you max out his unique weapon, this will become a 50% chance. This seems lower. It seems good, however, because now not only the auto attacks, but the hack actually does it as well. So that's pretty neat. As for the S2, unique treasure, increase the attack boost, gain CC resist by 400 skill duration. For the duration of the skill, recovers all mana 150 per second and increases own damage dealt against bosses by 10%. So this will be 25% uh, on max. I'm not sure what the mana does, but the dude definitely needs himself some mana, but will it really help him all that much? Not quite sure. As for the unique treasure S3, which is probably where the most damage is coming from. Increases damage by 20% upon a critical hit, recovers mana additional, blah 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 blah. Okay. After, reduces cooldown by one second and decreases the damage by 20%. Increases the damage, good. Okay. Very interesting. But yeah, I'm just basically assuming that the damage goes up. As for the soul weapon, instead of charges, it will be skills up to six times. Well, if all of the skills are on super low cooldown uh, and he does have a lot of mana, let's say you uh, on PvP run a Brazier of Elf, uh, you'll be able to spam the living hell out of the people. And I'm very curious on how this is gonna play out. Every time Roy cast a Blade Claw, bloody bloody blood deals extra damage. Each time Roy casts it, deals additional damage to the target and inflict mortal wound. Okay, so that is interesting. Not quite sure how good that is. Uh, but what is this? The cooldown has went down from 25 seconds to 18. Now, I'm not quite sure if I'm feeling that because I know, I'm not sure how many times you can use this. But in terms of doing a world boss, not at a 10 times with a buff like this, you will be done with your soul weapon halfway through the fight. Roy going nuts and soul weapon activation. Yo, he actually sounds very interesting now after the patch. The advancement one. 
for the duration blade claw does not remove mortal wound stacks yo yo that that in all fairness a1 is completely ridiculous because that means every single time you can proc these five blade stacks or these five stacks of mortal wound and you can keep applying that damage over and over and over again oh that is sick after the advancement too for the duration of the skill fixes the cooldown of blade claw to zero seconds and additionally it recovers one orb of mana on use isn't it like the whole thing is four mana bars you can get two back by usual parts and then oh my lordy lord if you would put like a character that gives you mana and there are a lot of them like if you put Shea up here and give Roy that mana on every single hit that is broken but do keep in mind guys if you got an A2 Roy and you can jump to somebody's backline you can stack mortal wounds upon their nuts and you will be able to blade claw people to death fix that with a brazier of elf and you will be blasting it so in all honesty this seems like a major buff on paper but i am not able to tell you guys because i haven't gotten or haven't seen any a220 roys uh outside of one person so i guess we'll have to wait and see if i find anything on roy any footage make sure to check out my discord i will be posting videos if i find anything uh one thing i am super happy about and this is uh maybe even gonna cost me some money but yo look at this shock man outfit man he looks like anubis incarnated like he absolutely looks ridiculous and i've seen his skill set and we'll go over that in a hot second but i might bench my loman yo this dude is an absolute monster as for the new zara outfit this thing actually looks high i like me some legs yeah like like this is the global tendency that i hate is that the good shit is hidden behind a painted with wall if i would have to recommend this by anything is put this thing as an incentive because it gets people playing like play a month or so with shockman to achieve this outfit I honestly would feel like it would get people to play because it will then make a huge incentive to really get the skin and get your favorite character up there. But everybody in the chat is already saying, yo, they forgot about magical tanks, bro. Where's my magical tank? I know, man, I know. Now, do keep in mind, Shockman comes a for free with a uh, five tickets and you get him at a five star a level 50 a for free the helm decorations has reduced in a lot of worth normally it would take you 100 of these helm decorations it now turned down to 60 which is pretty neat and another thing that is actually interesting now with the recent change you actually get a slight amount of unique weapon and unique treasure fragments extra because it used to be 25.7 uh, unique fragments on the stage 9 now it is 27 so it might not be a lot but overall this is definitely good it takes you less time more rewards I'm digging this but not to make this video any longer let's make sure that I get a separate video onto Shockmat that will be released before the end of the week let me tell you this straight off the bat. He is broken on a low investment. He will be replacing my low man guaranteed. And oh my God, I'm still contemplating whether I should pay a lot of dollars for that outfit of his. But let's stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys in the next one.